Chromatography is a useful technique to separate the components of a mixture. You might recall doing an experiment similar to this one I've shown here in younger grades, where you would take a marker and then using water, separate the components of that particular um, ink mixture. Now, let's take a look at some of the theory that lies behind it. We begin with what we call the stationary phase. So the stationary phase, perhaps in this experiment, was paper. And it's a commonly used material. Another material that can be used is silica or alumina gel. Now let's explore this a little bit further by looking at some of the intermolecular forces that are present. The paper is about 10% water. That water is attached to the hydroxide molecules that are present in the cellulose molecule of which paper is made. So it's this water that is really our stationary phase. In silica or alumina gel, there are numerous hydroxyl groups. These hydroxyl groups, they act as our bonding sites in the gel. Whether it's water or hydroxyl groups, we have these highly polar sites. Our mobile phase is the solvent. And we can choose solvents of varying polarity. This solvent is absorbed by our stationary phase and makes its way up. Hence, it's referred to as being mobile. As it moves up, it will be dragged through our sample, which is a mixture of components. These components will have different solubilities in the stationary phase or the mobile phase. Let's start by saying we have a component that's attracted or very soluble in our stationary phase. As a result, it won't move very far. So it might move a small distance. So that's an example of a mixture or a component that likes our stationary phase. There could also be a component that likes our mobile phase and it would move higher up. So as our solvent, the mobile phase moves up, this particular component moves with the solvent. And as a result, this has a, an affinity for the mobile phase. Let's now take a look at an example of a question that explores some of these ideas. So down here was my sample. I also added then a mobile phase. In this case, the mobile phase was a nonpolar solvent. The stationary phase was paper chromatography, so it's paper, which then means it's really the 10% water that's the important component here, which is polar. As our mobile phase moved through our sample, so it moved its way up this way, it broke it into two particular parts. We'll call it component A up here and B down here. The first thing I'm asked to determine is what's called the retention factor. The 
This is an equation you're going to have to remember. To calculate the retention factor, I need knowledge of the distance moved by my component. So let's start off with the retention factor for A. What's the distance it moved? Well, it moves 7.5 centimeters. What about the distance moved by the solvent? Now I have two numbers here. I've got a 9 and a 10. It's important to remember when doing this calculation that everything is done with reference from the starting position of my sample, not the level of my liquid, but from the starting position of my sample. So I don't use the 10, I'll use the 9. And that gives me a retention factor of 0.83. There'll be no units because the centimeters will cancel. In a similar fashion, the retention factor for B, well, it moved 3.4 centimeters. The solvent moved 9.0 centimeters. And that gives me a retention factor of 0 0.37. In the last part of this question, we're asked which of these two components, A or B, is more polar? Well, substance B is attracted to my stationary phase. It didn't move very far. So substance B was attracted to the paper. And the paper, we know, is very polar. That would then suggest the attraction is due to the fact that B must also be a very polar molecule. 